and welcome to Zoo Radio. I'm Colin Daly and each week I'll be taking you on a guided tour of the zoo. We have been granted exclusive behind the scenes access to all the major exhibits as well as a unique insight into the residents from the people that know them best. This series has been recorded using the very latest in three-dimensional binaural recording techniques and is best listened to through a set of stereo headphones. Hi, uh, my name's uh, James Goodger. Um, I'm the uh, deputy head on the elephants. Um, I've uh, worked at the zoo for about 10 years now. Um, I've only been working with the elephants for just over a year. Um, so that's uh, been quite a, a challenge for the last few months, um, doing my training. Um, I used to work with the, uh, the chimps before. Um, so it's a bit of a, bit of a change in the uh, size of uh, animal I've been looking at. Is there any similarities between the two? <laughs> um, Perhaps uh, the fact that they're, they're both quite cheeky and uh, you know they uh, they will try to get one over on you if they can, um, but uh, that's, that's about the only <laughs> the only thing really. Okay, okay. Um, can you talk me through a, a typical typical day's work for yourself? Okay. Um, well, we all get to uh, get to work about eight o'clock in the morning. Um, that's when uh, all the mucking out starts. Um, just prepare the uh, the breakfast and, and stuff before we uh, come into the uh, elephant barn. Um, then we uh, we have the arduous task of uh, shoveling all the poo. Uh, we get about a trailer full every uh, every single morning. Um, so it's uh, quite a big job. Um, and then uh, quite literally. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, then uh, once we've got that out of the way, uh, we do uh, some training with the, uh, the elephants. Um, that's when we wash them as well. We wash them every morning. Right. Um, we use uh, a power washer, uh, similar to what you'd use on your car. Um, what we uh, we do, uh, the training routine that uh, the keepers are actually running through now. Um, this is what we do in the morning. Um, we stretch them down, um, get them to lift their feet up, um, put their head down, uh, just different uh, areas so we can reach uh, parts of their body easier. Um, so it's getting the, uh, the step ladders out every time we, we need to wash their back or anything. And do you use that if uh, you were treating an animal, for example? Is that like a, a control method as yes, well? Yes, it is, yeah. Um, if, it also helps if, you know, if ever the vet needs to look at them. Um, you know, this, uh, this sort of thing, they're used to it, they do it every single day. Um, so it's not going to be anything out of the ordinary for them. Um, so it, it makes things um, less scary for them because yeah. um, they, they do tend to speak quite easily uh, with different scenarios, something they're not used to. Um, and presumably much safer for yourselves as well. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, we've got that, that little bit of control. Um, you've not got a three-ton animal just charging around, uh, you know, doing whatever the, she wants uh, while we're trying to, um, you know, do any work. Uh, if we're working closely, we do have to um, put them uh, put them on a front and back chain just for health and safety reasons. So especially if the vet's coming in, um, there's uh, anyone that doesn't uh, work with the elephants, then um, it's uh, it, can, it can be dangerous because obviously the elephant doesn't know that that person, and uh, they can get uh, a bit scared, um, and they can become unpredictable if around people they don't know. And, and who's this in front of us now? Uh, this is Noor Jahan. Um, she's uh, 10 years old. Um, she's unrelated to the others in the uh, the herd. Um, she's like the uh, the auntie uh, to the uh, youngsters. Um, she's uh, just gobbling up all her uh, all her food. She's just done a bit of training. And um, how long does it take to? Um, we just saw the keeper there before he was uh, getting there to lift the legs and stuff. How long was, would that take to train? And kind of what age would you start? We start training uh, with the elephant right from when they're uh, six months old, right from when they you know right. they're down there. And it's sort of knee height. Um, uh, just simple things to start with, just like not running through a door when we open the door. Um, so they're all right when they're down there, but uh, when they weigh three ton and they're, uh, you know, about 12 foot, they're, uh, <laughs> you've got to, got to watch out. Um, so, um, and then things like lifting the feet, um, depends from elephant to elephant, but uh, most, most elephants will pick up uh, a new training uh, uh, item in a few weeks, um, it's just it's quite similar to training your dog, uh, giving a paw or anything like that. It's just keep repeating the process. Uh, lots of nice things, lots of treats, um, and eventually they uh, they realise you know well, 
this is nice. If I do this for them, then you know I'll get something nice, and uh, and then before you know it, they've, they've learnt it, and it's part of the routine. Do you think you could train my cat to use the toilet? <laughs> oh, we'll have a go. <laughs> um, so what made you decide to become a keeper then? Um, ever since uh, I was really little, actually. Um, I can remember my uh, my grandma brought me to try across uh, when I was uh, about four or five. And um, on the way home, I actually said to her, you know, I've decided what I'm going to do when I grow up. Oh, um, uh, and uh, as soon as I left school, I, uh, I was lucky enough to get a job. Um, I started as a, a YTS, did a two-year training course. Um, and then uh, after the two years, I passed my uh, animal management exam. And uh, they took me on as a, a fully-fledged keeper then. So. Uh, so if somebody was interested in becoming a keeper, you would suggest that as a, an ideal route to go down? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, if, if animals is what you, you love, and, you know, I mean, every day is different with them. You, it's so rewarding. You get so much back. Um, so, I mean, definitely, if, if people are, are interested in that, then a uh, very enjoyable uh, thing, to, uh, thing to do. Uh, what would you say would be the best part and possibly the worst part of your job? Um, best part... Um, I mean the, the the training and uh, and getting to to see the the end reward when they've they've learned the the, the training and uh, uh, just spending the, the time with them one to one, um, you know, building up a bond with them. Uh, I mean it's uh, it's fantastic. I mean every, every single one of them's got a different character, different personality. Um, so it's uh, it's quite can be quite amusing some days. You know, um, they're, they're always in a different mood every day. It's uh, you never know what quite what you're going to get every day. So it's uh, that's probably the best bit. Um, probably. Uh, Shoveling all the poo is probably the worst part of the job, but um, I mean, you get used to it. It's uh, it's not that bad. It keeps you very fit and healthy, though. I'd imagine yeah. a whole trailer full of morning. Yeah, um, certainly, uh, certainly builds your muscles up. Anyway, shoveling all the time and uh, uh, so quite a lot of uh, running around and uh, yeah, so uh, no chance trying to stay alive. Um, <laughs> do you have a favourite animal or section in the zoo? Um, well, we try not to have favourites, um, but. Uh, <laughs> we uh, probably, if I had to choose my favourite elephant, um, probably be Tara in the middle. She's uh, she's seven and a half. She's uh, quite a cheeky little girl, um, into everything. Um, always up to mischief as well. So, uh, it's, um, no, we're, we're not really supposed to have favourites. <laughs> I went to love them all. <laughs> Has there been any amusing stories uh, recently regarding the elephant's uh, escape attempts? Or um, no, um, <laughs> no, thankfully. Um, probably the uh, the most amusing things they, they get up to uh, at the minute is uh, trying to pinch things out the kitchen when we're not looking. Um, uh, we do have to uh, tell Norchan off quite a lot for uh, for that. She uh, she tends to sneak the door open when we're not looking and uh, try and nick the food. Um, mainly when we're doing the training when we're down the other end of the, the house um, but uh, on, on the whole they're quite well behaved so uh. so they're definitely intelligent animal then oh definitely yeah extremely so um, I mean uh, altogether they, they know about 30 different uh, commands um, uh, a lot of those of uh, what you've just seen uh, with the, the training um, um, and quite a lot of them are uh, moving the elephants around, walking them from pen to pen. Um, just commands such, you know, uh, move up, uh, come here, um, things like that. Um, just for generally, uh, you know, moving the, the elephants around and uh, putting them uh, where we need them. <laughs> I think somebody else wants to be interviewed. <laughs> OK. Um, which member of the animal kingdom do they belong to? Um, well, the uh, African elephants and Asian elephants uh, are, are in the group of their own. Um, uh, as they're both the, the largest uh, land animals uh, on the planet. Um, Africans are, are slightly bigger. Um, uh, they're weighing in uh, just over over three ton. Uh, the females, um, uh, males, uh, with the Asians and the Africans, uh, you're talking six and a half, seven ton uh, in weight. Um, so uh, by far. You know, quite the, the largest animals we've got. Uh, and, and how did they come uh, to be in the zoo? Were they rescued or have they been bred in captivity? Um, or? Right, well, Mimbu and Tonsi, uh, the, the two larger females. Um, Mimbu's the, the matriarch at the, the end of the house. Um, they both came over in 91 uh, from uh, Burma. Uh, they were used in Burmese logging camps. They already knew quite a lot of training, uh, yeah. quite a lot of the things we do here. Um, 
um, obviously because they were they were working. Um, they were used to basically like a, a JCB is really over here. Is uh, that what this uh, joint blue tube is? Is this to simulate a tree? Is it? Um, no. We, what we uh, that normally goes up on the uh, the bars. Uh, we normally hang those up um, and we stuff food in there and uh, just kind of uh, enrichment. Uh, same with the tyres really. We uh, they can rub against them. They can uh, chuck them about uh, on the bars. Um, we hide food in there for them. Uh, and do they use scent marking at all, elephants? Um, not scent marking as such, no. They, um, <coughs> when they're, they're in season, uh, sometimes they do uh, uh, dribble with the, the urine. Um, oh, <laughs> no chance pinching the, uh, the handle for the door. <laughs> How would you describe their personalities then? Personalities? Um, quite a few of them are cheeky. Um, no Han uh, can be. Um, Tara definitely, um, she's uh, one of the youngsters. Um, Tonzi, uh, Tara's mum, uh, she's extremely stubborn. Um, and dare I say it, sometimes she can even be quite obnoxious. Uh, you know, she, uh, uh, if she doesn't want to do something, she, uh, she's quite quick to let you know, and uh, you know, she uh, digs the heels in sometimes. Uh, so you have to, have to be on top of her sometimes. Um, Karishma's the, uh, the spoiled kid uh, of the group. Um, Basically, because her mum's boss, and uh, she uh, she tends to take the attitude of uh, I'll, I'll do what I want, and if you've got a problem, you see mum. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> she tends to get away with quite a lot. Um, so most of the time, she's up to no good. Um, uh, what type of food do they eat normally then? Right, the uh, the bulk of their food is uh, hay. Um, between the five of them, uh, they'll get through about eight or nine bales a day. Um, so. Uh, I mean, that's uh, we give them the hay mainly, um, uh, and through the day they have um, they have a bale of hay in the morning. Um, they have horse and pony nuts in the morning. They both they all have a, about half a bucket full of uh, horse and pony nuts. Um, they have to put vitamin E supplements. Um, it's, um, naturally in the wild they'd, they'd be eating a lot of uh, trees, a lot of leaves. Um, and obviously when a tree's uh, alive, uh, that's where they're getting all the vitamins from, um, especially the vitamin E. Uh, we do feed them browse uh, when it's available, uh, but obviously once it's been cut down for you know 24 hours or something, a lot of the vitamins have gone, um, especially this time of year as well. Could you just describe uh, what, what you keep, the keepers are doing at the moment? Right, um, keepers have uh, just put the elephants back together um, and uh, just out of a, it's like a politeness thing really, we just get them to uh, back up to the uh, the back of the pen um, and just stand with their trunk up um, just while we uh, manoeuvre the others and open the gates. Uh, it's just so they're not running around while we're trying to open the gates. Um, it's obviously with the size of them, uh, even if they're, they don't mean to... Uh, to get in the way or uh, you know hurt anyone they could do by accident so um, it's just a politeness thing really you do have phenomenal control i'm quite impressed actually it's <laughs> yeah they uh, they are uh, very good really they're, they're not a bad uh, bad bunch of girls so they're, um, they're very uh, very well mannered so uh, we are lucky in that sense um I mean, some elephants can be uh, a bit more bad and a bit more cheeky than uh, these girls so uh, yeah I'm quite lucky I noticed on the backs so, um, they've got markings and numbers. Is that from yeah, when they were working in a sense? When uh, they were in the Burmese logging camps, um, the, uh, the Mahouts used to um, have to let the, the females out into the forests at night time when they weren't being worked. Um, so it's a bit like cattle branding, really, so everyone knew whose elephant belonged to who. It's like a number plate for an elephant, really. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they've got the, uh, the Star of Burma on one side and then a, a four-digit code on the, on the other. Uh, have they bred here? Um, yeah, uh, Mimbu and Tonzi, uh, we... We bred them uh, back in '98. Uh, um, we had to um, send the two females up to Chester Zoo, um, so we had to get them in the back of a lorry and, uh, and cart them up the M6 <laughs> up to Chester. Um, and they spent a year up at Chester with uh, the, the bull uh, Chang. Um, he's the father of the two youngsters. Um, uh, they then came back, um, uh, spent the remainder of their pregnancy, um, which was. Uh, best part of a, a year. Um, the, the full pregnancy is uh, nearly uh, 22 months, so uh, it's, it's quite a long time. But we are looking at some point in the future of, uh, of breeding again, um, but we may, uh, may be looking into artificial insemination this time. Um, 
basically it's, um, it cuts down on stress levels of you know having to load them up into a van take them away from a truck you know take them away from the herd uh, introduce them to another herd um, it also cuts down on, on cross infection from other other herds as well what kind of lifespan uh, does an elephant expect here as opposed to in the wild? We're talking uh, anything up to 60, 65 years, um, a bit less in the wild. Um, you've got veterinary care and, and, and that's it. Uh, uh. and, and who's your oldest here? Um, Mimbu's the, uh, the oldest, she's 23. Um, so she's actually quite young then, really. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah um, so it's quite a young herd. Um, uh, Tons is 22. So both babies are seven and a half. The same babies, they're, uh, they're juveniles now. <laughs> well, that's uh, some baby, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, two ton, uh, two ton baby. Yeah. Um, and Norjan's ten. Um, Norjan's actually um, slightly bigger than uh, the two adults already. Um, basically, because um, remember when Tomsi a Burmese elephant, um, Norjan's uh, a pure Indian. Uh, they're, they're a slight subspecies. Um, the Indians tend to be a bit leggier, a bit lanky. Um, so she's uh, she's actually uh, slightly taller already, and she's going to keep growing until she's about uh, 20. So uh, we're not quite sure where she's heading. <laughs> and do they suffer from any uh, common problems or ailments? Um, not generally. I mean, probably the most common thing is uh, uh, feet prob- uh, foot problems. Uh, we have to do regular foot care with them. Um, uh, that's partly where this training comes in with uh, lifting the feet. Uh, we do get them to uh, put their foot on a, like a pedestal, um, and we use uh, like farriers' uh, tools, uh, hoof knives, and uh, rasps, and that sort of thing, and give them a bit of a manicure and uh, uh, cut any uh, dead skin away. Uh, you know, file the pad down and. Uh, take any stones and things like that out. I won't ask you if you've ever shooed an elephant, but... (laughs) 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 Can you just explain that to me, please? (laughs) Sorry, just Um, describe it. Yeah, my colleague Rob uh, is uh, just in the process of smearing some uh, mixed fruit jam uh, over the logs. Um, Thank you for that. (laughs) It's a form of um, enrichment for them. Um, We put that on the tyres and uh, on the bars and stuff, and it takes on a long time. Uh, to suck it all up, get it all over their trunks and they get quite sticky and messy and uh, generally have quite a bit of fun with that. So They, they seem to be looking forward to that, is yeah. that what the commotion is in the yeah. Falcon? Um, obviously they know you guys are here as well, um, and quite often after feeding um, we have the uh, public uh, who uh, come and they, they pay a little bit to, to the zoo um, to uh, come and feed the elephants as well, so uh, give them some bananas. So they, uh, quite often they, uh, they stand there looking hopeful and uh, <laughs> stick their trunks out and uh, look, at, look at it all sweet and innocent. <laughs> they try their best anyway. <laughs> Brilliant, thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. Both our harbour seals and Patagonian sea lions are fed on fish. In the wild, they would also eat squid, crustaceans, and shellfish. <laughs> Male sea lions are approximately three times the size of females, weighing up to 340 kilograms and measuring up to two and a half meters. The females only reach 150 kilos and two meters. Mountain gorillas are one of the most endangered primates. Poaching and deforestation means that only a few hundred survive in East Africa. The Twycross orangutan, Kibria, travelled at least 1,250 kilometres or 780 miles on breeding loans to other zoos. Three generations of her family live in the zoo. was one of the first zoos in England to breed smooth Indian otters in captivity. Smooth Indian otters are no longer in Twycross. In the morning, meerkats get a scatter feed of mealworms or locusts. In the afternoon, they get eggs or chopped meats, chicks or mice and fruit. The young otters are very noisy and playful. You may see them chasing each other in the water or hear their high-pitched squeaks to one another. The current population of Patagonian sea lions is estimated to be 230,000, and so they are classed as endangered. 
The new sea line pool was completed in 1989, including waterfall, basking rocks and a separate pool for any pups born. Uh, I'm Ed, and I'm a ride operative at Pirates Cove. OK, um, can you tell me a little bit about Pirates Cove? Um, we, uh, we have several different rides which we run for the children. We also have a golf course, and um, the kids come down and, and have a great day here. OK, what other rides have you got? What's, this is the golf course in front of us. Uh, yeah. what's, your, what's your handicap? Oh, I haven't got a very good one. We've got a nine-hole golf course. Uh, we also have a pirate ship that's uh, like a swinging boat, a treasure island that goes round, uh, a zebra spin that also goes round, and a, a little children's ride called the AA. It's £1.50 a ticket or four for five pounds, and group bookings we do for two pounds for uh, three rides. OK, and is it a popular? Um, quite popular, yes. During the summer months, definitely, you know, more than the winter. And uh, we've got a wonderful backdrop here... <laughs> of the Gibbons going bananas. So we have. They're always, uh, always quite noisy, especially in the morning for some reason. I don't know why that is. OK, and uh, what's this in front of us here then? Uh, this is, uh, during the summer, when it's really busy, we have uh, two inflatable slides. Um, they just you get three slides down and they're quite popular for the kids and also adults. So if they're a bit tired after walking around the zoo, this is a good place to come and blow some steam? Oh, it certainly is, yeah. yeah. This is usually the last place they come when they come to the zoo. We're uh, open like, the latest out of the, uh, the other things here, such as the calves and that. OK, and if we continue walking round, um, what's this in front of us here? Uh, this is the train. Okay. Um, the train's open also, usually when we are. It's one pound a ticket, though, for the train. OK, uh, we're coming across what looks like some uh, bumper cars. Uh, this is the AA. This just goes around on a track. We made this uh, last year. Uh, it's meant to represent all the different animals in, the, uh, in Asia. So we've got the, uh, like the lynx, the panda, the tiger, and it just goes around through, through each continent. So we've got like China and Russia and so on and so on. Brilliant, I can hardly hear you with the monkeys going in the background. And uh, if we look uh, far down to our left there, we've got, uh, is that an adventure playground? Yeah, that's free, that's, uh, anybody can use that any time. And uh, also we've got the cafe just there and the, when it's busy that's open also. So this is a brilliant place to bring the kids for lunch? Certainly is, yeah, it's fantastic. Brilliant, thanks. Twycross has very good breeding groups of Langer and Colobus monkeys. In fact, by 2003, there had been 79 births in the Colobus family. <coughs> Gunons mostly eat fruit, so they can help a forest regenerate by spreading seeds. Whereas Colobus and Langers mainly eat leaves. Langer females solicit males and can be very aggressive towards them. They may kick or slap them if a male does not respond appropriately. Sea otters are endangered, although numbers are starting to increase in parts of their original range. European otters are also vulnerable. You've been listening to the Zoo Radio Podcast. Please like and subscribe to get the latest episodes.